Hope you're all today, hope you're feeling grand, and always well in your world. Hello everybody. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do another video lesson on the legendary Mr. Peter Green. Uh, the song we're going to focus on today is called uh, Got a Good Mind to Give Up Living, slash All Over Now. Uh, it's originally a B.B. King song, but I think Peter's version, nothing against B.B.'s, but Peter's version is just stunning. Uh, especially the version in 1970 at the warehouse in New Orleans. Ha! Give me a time machine, I want to go and witness it. It's just, it's a masterclass in expressive blues guitar playing. It's absolutely stunning. There's just so much in there. To, like, you could analyse that song for the rest of your life and you wouldn't waste your life. You know what I mean? It's one of those songs. It's just an absolute masterpiece. Absolute masterpiece. And Peter is a genius. And it's just, it's just, it's just stunning. It's absolutely stunning guitar playing and expression and just freedom all at the same time. It's absolutely amazing. So, uh, so we're going to talk, uh, talk about that today. We're not. I won't be teaching that song note for note uh, because the simple reason is Peter wouldn't play it the same way twice. You know, um, Peter kind of starts the first kind of like lick that Peter kind of starts the New Orleans version is that. You know, but uh, there's version. There's other versions of um, God God Minds Give Up Living where he doesn't start with that. And, you know, and you can hear him kind of. You know, or do all, uh, different kind of kind of licks, and he just again, it comes down to just freedom of expression. Don't feel you need to play things exactly like that version, because the next version they played, or the version of the previous night, will be totally different. And I want you to start thinking that way when you play. I don't want you to be thinking, "I've got to learn it note for note." No, you don't. You know, you've got to inject a bit of yourself into there as well. So you can play these Peter Green licks. But you've also got to get a bit of yourself in there as well and start to kind of feel what that song means to you and how does it, how do you want to express yourself through it. So uh, so I said, I won't be teaching you no for no. I will be t teaching a few little kind of like little phrases and also talking about what scales you can use. But... Um, I'm not going to do go through note for note, lick for lick. It's just, it seems really counterproductive. It's always felt counterproductive to me to do that, especially in a blues like this, because it's all down to kind of like your expression and how you feel. So, um, so yeah, I'll be teaching a few bits and pieces, but not going into depth note for note. I just don't, I just don't think it's, it, it, it doesn't, it's not conducive to actually kind of learning this style. I mean, you need to really kind of learn to kind of like, push a bit of yourself into it and express kind of like yourself, let's say. So, um, so yeah. So, um, so, uh, let's talk about tone-wise first. Let's talk about that first. So, pickup-wise, uh, most of God Good Mind to Give Up Living is all neck pickup. Pretty much. Apart from, there is a bit in the New Orleans jam and other jams I've heard where Peter will switch to his bridge pickup to make the guitar just scream more and just hammer things home. So, uh, give you an example quickly. Like, uh, on a turnaround in God Good Mind to Give Up Living, uh, Peter might be doing something like... On the neck pick up. And then... You know, and then he'd switch to his bridge pickup to make it scream even more. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, just... Um... Just kind of like it just emphasizes where you are with it you know what i mean it really just all of a sudden just screams and again you can do that when you need to do that you know what i mean peter went to that bridge pickup at that point because he wanted to you know he wanted it to scream at that point and that's what he did so and again that kind of needs to yeah you need to carry that over to kind of like how you play and it's really really important to um learn this style is that 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 freedom of improvisation that freedom of expression is so important in this style. It's, it's massive. I can't. I cannot under understate how important that freedom of expression is to play this this style. It's really really important to develop it. It takes time, 
but you know you do have to dive in the deep end and kind of like learn to swim basically it takes time but it is worth it so uh yeah predominantly most of the song is neck pickup and you want to be kind of riding the volume control really it kind of like you know you, you can kind of go and also kind of like different kind of pick attacks so you can kind of like kind of hit really hard and then really soft it. that kind of thing and then also you can kind of like let's say riding your volume control you can get even quieter or you know really really loud and aggressive so you ought to be riding your volume control uh, on your net pickup I say I, I've this guitar is modded now I am, I've only got a master volume so I don't this isn't well that's a coil tap it's not wired in so I've only got a master volume so if it looks a bit weird of like why is he tweaking that for the neck it's because it's a master volume master tone thing i don't get on very well with two volumes it drives me a bit balmy so um anyway enough on that so um so yeah net pick up ride the volume do all you know pick lightly pick hard you know it, it again You know, that, that kind of thing. Peter was a master at dynamic, an absolute master at dynamic, and it's so hard to emulate. Uh, I mean, I, I would I would happily put on record that trying to play like Peter Green is one of the hardest things in guitar. Trying to play like Peter Green is really difficult because it's so... Because he's so expressive and because he's got so much feel and so much kind of like he just knew what he wanted to say with the guitar it's just it's really difficult to emulate it's really difficult to emulate. but we can get close if we you know if we just kind of like keep at it it's, it's difficult but it, it can be kind of you can get close you know what i mean uh anyway um so yeah so net pick up ride the volume different kind of pick time uh kind of dynamics stuff like that so pick really lightly pick really hard with a diff bit, bit more volume <laughs> And then go back to quiet again. So yeah. Because Peter would do these things all the time where he would do like a run and you would hear certain notes, and then some notes would almost be inaudible. What like Like that kind of thing, you know what I mean? So when he went up like when you go up low end, he kind of it becomes almost inaudible. It's there, but it's kind of not, you know, it's again. Dynamics, it's absolutely key to Peter's playing. So, um, dynamics and intensity, kind of that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, predominantly net pickup, bridge pickup when you want the guitar to scream. And again, when you go to a bridge pickup, that volume wants to be cracked and, you know, you want it to really belt out. You know, you don't, re you don't really want to be playing it clean, you know, quiet on the bridge pickup. It's not really a kind of thing. Um, the Peter Green sound, the kind of the out of phase sound, you can use that if you want. Peter, I'm sure he did at some point, but I say predominantly, Peter was a neck uh, humbucker guy. You know, it was a lot of neck humbucker, especially well, especially in slow blueses. I mean, songs like Oh Well, Green Man Alishi, um, Rattlesnake Shake and stuff like that, they're all bridge humbucker, but predominantly when Peter was soloing or doing slow blues, it was neck humbucker or out of phase, but predominantly neck pick up so um so yeah so that's where we kind of want to be like i say bridge pick up only when you want it to scream so um so yeah so that's the kind of thing the tone what i'll be going for is not super saturated it's not like massive massive loads of gain but it wants to be enough to let it sing because you can hear peter sings you know what i mean and it, it comes from i can guarantee he's probably going for like a fender at that new orleans gig it's probably a fender amp and it's probably wound right up you know what I mean? It's probably right... Yeah, it's probably cranked to the teeth to get that... <laughs> yeah, to get that kind of, you know, singing kind of sound that he's got. And it's, you know... So there is a fair bit of gain there. It's not over, like, you know, heavy saturation, but it is, you know, there is quite a bit there. So, um... So that's that. Um... Okay, so that's totally what we kind of want to be going for. And again... Aggressive but warm. That's the key to Peter's tone. You know, it's always got this kind of like sharp razor edge, but it's never nasty. If that makes any sense, it's always it always cuts through, but it's never gnarly. You know what I mean? It's really hard to get your sound actually. I think you need a cranked up 
you know, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be loud to get the exact dynamics of Peter Eiffel being perfect. You can't redo it kind of like low volume, but you can, again, you can get close. Okay, so, uh, and I'm going to do a video on that one day. I need to get, I need to get an amp wound up all the way and just kind of like try and mess around with Peter's dynamics. I digress. So, the song. The song is in G minor, okay? The key is just G minor, so we can use G minor pentatonic scale, uh, the blues scale, basically. Uh, well, minor pentatonic. <laughs> But I will talk a bit more about that in a bit. First, I want to talk about the chord progression because the chord progression is really, really, really awesome. And it's a great chord progression to know, not only for this song, but to jam with friends or at a jam night or a blues night or whatever, or in a band. You know, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous chord progression. So let's talk about that. So, uh, Danny Kerwin's playing the rhythm. And like I say, the song's in G minor. I'm just going to knock down the reverb because I don't want to drown this out too much <clears throat> so the chords are G minor well it, the intro starts with G minor F major and then it's E flat major 7 so let me uh, zoom in a bit and bring a camera in okay so yeah so we've got a G minor to start with and it's it basically just kind of like a bar chord but actually what Danny's doing is this so he, he plays the fifth fret on the D and then it's just barring the G B and E on the third fret and it's just a very simple pattern of D G B E uh, B G so very simple pattern and then you go to your F major Again, it's a very simple pattern of uh, the D string, G, B, E, B, G. But you're in this pattern now. So you're playing third fret on the uh, on the D, and then your uh, second fret on the G, and then you're using your first finger to bar the first fret on the B and E. And then we go to E flat major seven, which is a gorgeous change. So here it's um, ring finger on the sixth fret on the A, little finger on the sixth fret on the G. Uh, your middle finger wants to be on the fifth fret on the D, and then your first finger wants to be on the fourth fret on the uh, fourth uh, on the on the B string. Oh, I'm so clever. And then we move this shape down one fret to B major seven. So that whole kind of like intro bit is just this. It goes around twice. So it's like. And then we're into the actual main song and you hear Peter go, I've got a good mind to it. And then we're into G, uh, and basically does that compression again. So the first time around, when Peter starts singing, is G, ma G minor, F major, E flat major seven, D major seven, and then back to G minor. And then we go to C minor, and then back to G minor. And then we go to C minor, hold on this C minor for, a, well, a while. And then back to G. And then C minor. And then D, mi D major 7, sharp 9. This chord here, let me stop here quick and show you this chord. So this is basically the Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze chord, but it's just a D. So it's a D major, D major seven, but with a sharp nine, which is your little finger. So what you're doing is your middle fingers on the fifth fret on the A, your first fingers on the fourth fret on the D, uh, ring finger is on the fifth fret on the G, and then your little finger is on the sixth fret on the B. It's just a gorgeous turnaround that from that C, C minor. Gorgeous. And then we go back to this. Okay, 
and then it stops. There's like a brief stop uh, in the verses only. In the guitar solo, once you get to this B major 7, it starts again. So it goes, you know, so as a kind of like a turnaround kind of thing, from that, uh, from the C to the D, does uh, in the guitar solo, it'll do this. start again in a guitar solo but when Peter's singing it does this so from the C, uh, the C minor again and when you get to that D you just stop and then he does uh, then Danny Cohen does this chord and then it starts again. So that's kind of like the whole thing, if you will. So um, so I'll quickly go through one more. Oh, actually, let me show you this D kind of like whole kind of chord here. Um, so what it is, I'm 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 playing it with my thumb. You, uh, it, can, you, I suppose you could kind of do it like that. It'd be a bit, it's a bit weird for me. I'll, I'll show you that as well. But um, I'm playing it with my thumb. My thumb is on the 10th fret on the, on the low E. And it's also killing the A string, so the A string isn't sounding because my thumb. And then my first finger is barring the, uh, the D and the G string at the 10th fret. And then I'm using my ring finger on the 11th fret on the B. Okay. Uh, and if you can't use your thumb, uh, your first finger wants to be on the 10th fret on the low E. And that will also kill the A string as well. And then middle finger on the 10th fret on the D. Uh, ring finger on 10th fret on the G and then little finger on the 11th fret on the B and that comes in like this so from that C minor again into the verse but like I say that only happens during the verse when Peter's soloing it just it misses that out and it just flows through okay so um so that's it and that's the chord progression and it's an absolutely stunning blues progression and that reverse kind of turn around instead of going from the five to the four chord you know from the from the D to the C we're going from the four chord to the five chord so C to a D which is re uh, really really cool and it just sounds I actually prefer it. I think it's more melodic, personally, but I, you know, I love it more. But uh, so yeah, so um, so that's the chord progression. Like I say, it's really, really gorgeous. It's really, really simple, and it's just really, really nice to kind of get going on a looper or a friend to play it, and you kind of like trade off solos or in a band situation or whatever. It's just a gorgeous blues uh, progression. So again, uh, one more time, I'll go through the whole thing really slow, uh, as if it's like a verse. So. Um, so forget the intro, I'll say the intro is just around the G, F, uh, E flat and D twice and then it comes into a verse. Um, you know, you can hear this anyway, when Peter starts singing is when the kind of song actually starts. So uh, this is the actual progression in the verse. So G minor, F major, E flat major 7, D flat major, uh, D major 7, back to G, C minor. G minor. Then we go to back to the C minor. And it holds here. Back to uh, G. So coming up on the turnaround now. So C minor. D major 7, sh sharp 9. C, uh, G minor, F major, E major 7, okay, so that's the chord progression, that's kind of what we're doing, like I say, uh, when you when you solo, or if you just want to loop it, forget the stop, and just go flow straight through, but uh, if you're actually trying to play along to the song, that's what it does, it's actually really hard to play along to the song, because it's not actually in tune, 
Uh, they're just in kind of whatever tuning they are in. It's slightly flat, I believe. Um, so it's kind of like between the G and the G uh, and and like the uh, uh, G sharp kind of thing. It's somewhere in the middle there. It's not quite in tune. So bear that in mind if you're going to play along. That it's it's quite hard to play along to because it's not it's not fully in tune. So if your guitar's fully in tune, you will have to retune it to what they're in. So. Um, so that's that. So it's very it's a very simple chord progression, but very gorgeous. Awesome to get going on a looper. Yeah, you know, it's just heavenly. You can play along to it for hours. It's absolutely gorgeous. So uh so yeah, so let's talk about scales now. So that's the chord progression. Let's talk about scales and what Peter uses. So Peter uh, uses G minor pentatonic here. uses the Peter Green scale here, which uh, I spoke about in the first introductory video, and he also uses the G minor pentatonic scale here. So you basically got like three different positions of a G minor pentatonic scale really, but this one is, yeah, is one that Peter would favour. A lot of guitarists like, you know, Peter Green, uh, Eric Clapton, Brian Robertson, um, you know, a lot of those guitarists like this kind of mid, it's kind of like a midway pentatonic scale, if you will, because you've got your G minor pentatonic here. You have it here as well. Uh, sorry, I was wrong. So, um, no, it wasn't, it was right. Ha! <laughs> got it wrong a second time. Anyway, moving along. Um, and it's just like it's just got that kind of it's not harsh like it kind of it's not as kind of like woolly and kind of gnarly as it is down here and it's not as woolly and dark as it is here it's just nice it's got a real vocal kind of quality to it so peter would favor this position that kind of scale there and i'll talk about that a bit more in a minute but um but also peter does use uh, the um, B flat major scale, but not a lot. But every now and again, in this song, it's mainly pentatonics. Peter was a ma you know he's he's a blues guy. He mainly uses pentatonics. There's no kind of like crazy kind of modal work or anything like that going on here. Although maybe I don't know. I don't personally think so. I don't hear it. I just hear pentatonics, and that's what he plays. I don't know. But um, but yeah. So um. So yeah, so let's let's talk about minor, like, the scales we can use. So G minor pentatonic scale up here. If you don't know the uh, G minor pentatonic scale, it's this one. So we start off on the low E on the first fret, which is our root note, which is our G note. So low E on the first fret, uh, on the third fret, sorry. And then we go up to the uh, sixth fret on the low E. Then we go to the third fret on the A, fifth fret A, third fret D, fifth fret D. Then we go to the 3rd fret G, 5th uh, fret G, 3rd uh, fret B, 6th fret B, 3rd thir uh, fret high E, and then 6th fret high E. So that's our minor pentatonic. Our, well, our pentatonic. Uh, you can also add in the B flat major scale notes as well, which is the 4th fret on the uh, the B string and you can also add in the fifth fret on the high E string so that scale would now be this and this note in particular the A note is uh, particularly important in this song because Peter would do these half step bends where he would bend up that A to the B flat that kind of thing. And that's a really, really, it's a gorgeous thing, especially when you're kind of down here. You know, you, you, you can, you know, you, you hear it quite a bit in his in his playing, especially in this song. It's real. it's an emotional bend, that half step bend from the A to the B, the, the B flat. It's gorgeous. I mean, that note there, the, um, what would it be? I don't really know. That note there on the fourth fret on the, on the, on the B string. It's not as important, you know, it's not really that important. Um, it's nice to know it's there and you can use it, but it's not massively important. Okay, so 
that's the scale you, you, you'll mainly be pulling from up on this kind of first position, if you will. So I'll do it one finger, actually, so. Okay, so that's that kind of first position. The I'll say the main, well, the main position that Peter would use a lot, like I say, is this kind of Peter Green scale, where it's going to start off on the on the tenth fret on the G string, and I've, I've spoke about this in the introductory lessons and other other lessons I've done on this as well. But it's kind of like tenth fret G string, twelfth fret G string, and then you can use the tenth fret on the B, eleventh fret B, thirteenth uh, fret B, and then back down to the high E on the tenth, high E eleven, high E thirteen. And again, you can kind of do all sorts with this. You can get and get those kind of like classic Peter Green licks. And that bend just comes from bending up the 13th fret a tone. And you can also bend up the 13th fret on the high E a tone as well. So hopefully, hopefully this is making sense. If there's, if there's anything I'm not explaining, hopefully... Uh, to what? Well, hopefully you can kind of see. So that scale we can use a lot. And the first lick in the warehouse uh, got a good mind to give up living comes out of this scale. Okay, so that brings me neatly into teaching this kind of intro kind of like lick and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a really nice kind of little lick to know. So it starts on the 12th fret on the G. Goes to the tenth uh, fret on the B, eleventh uh, fret B, thirteenth fret B, and it finishes up on the fifteenth fret on the B. And it's, and then we go back down to the thirteenth uh, fret B, eleventh fret B, and we finish up on the tenth fret B. And then you hear, and it comes in. Got a good. I don't want to sing it just in case it gets found um but yeah so that's gorgeous and peter's got a, a certain dynamic about it it kind of like it starts off quite loud and calms down so oh. and then we're into the the verse okay so um so yeah so that's the other scale we're going to be pulling from in this, in this song and i say all those notes will work but again you've got to find where you want them to kind of sit so to say and then the last scale is basically just the third position of a g minor pentatonic so exactly the same position uh, same shape we used here but down here now so we're starting on the 15th fret though we then it's 18th fret low E, uh, 15th fret A, 17th fret A, uh, 15th fret D, 17th fret D, uh, 15th fret G, uh, 17th fret G, and then we go to the 15th fret B, 16th fret B, 18th fret B, 15th fret high E, 17th fret high E, and 18th fret high E. So... We cannot. We can use them, and that's basically the exact same scale. Just an octave higher, basic. Well, kind of a octave. No, yeah, it's an octave higher. Um, you can also use uh, these notes here. So uh, we're at, uh, the nineteenth fret on the G, and then you can use the eighteenth fret on the B. Uh, the uh, my gravy. So I think eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twentieth fret on the B. And then the, uh, the 18th fret on the high E, and then the 20th fret on the high E. So it's like a house. You can use those notes as well to get really high, and you can bend up about 20th fret, you know, if you want to kind of get a bit screamy. And you can also bend up, uh, bend that upper tone. You can also bend up the B string on the 20th fret tone as well. Um, and all sorts of, yeah, but there is a million combinations of notes we can use in this song, and it's just gorgeous. And again, key 
is just to play around with it. What I'm going to do at the end of this video is I'm just going to record my loop playing with a chord diagram in front of it. Just kind of like as a backing track, basically. So um, hopefully, if this, you know, if, if, if I kind of explain this okay, uh, you can kind of, you know, let this video play at the end and just kind of like let that backing track play and you can start to kind of <laughs> kind of mess around with it, so to say. So, uh, so yeah, they're, they're the kind of like three kind of position scales we're going to be working from mainly in this. And again, that scale here is here. So uh, it's basically just kind of like uh, eight, eight fret on the high, sixth fret high, so uh, eight fret on the B, sixth fret B, and then we're going to end up on the G string on the seventh fret. So you can use the, uh, this scale. This bit, which is the bottom half of a B uh, major pentatonic, but we don't need to know that. Then we've got this scale, and then we've also got this scale, and then that. And you can actually link this one to the G major, so you can go... If that makes any sense, I hope, I hope this is making sense. I'm terrified this is not making any sense and I'm ruining this entire video. Oh, gravy. We are, what, 20 minutes in and I'm already, well, we're more than 20 minutes in, but I'm, uh, I'm already terrified we're not doing very good here. But hopefully, hopefully, if I say, hopefully there's anything I'm not explaining, you can kind of, uh, you can see what I'm doing and it makes more sense. But you can learn to kind of like flow that through. <laughs> So, um, and there's that bend, there's that Peter Green vibrato bend, which is really hard to do when you've got a, uh, a back of a chair blocking your arm. So that's just bending up the, uh, the sixth fret on the B. And that's just like a standard kind of blues, like a bending up the G string on the fifth fret. And then you go to the high E string on the third fret. And then the... B string on the third fret, and then you bend up that sixth fret a tone, and then put the Peter Green vibrato on. Okay, um, so yeah, so uh, and that's pretty much it to be honest with you. There isn't a great deal to it. It's just about finding your kind of like your voice in the song. So, for instance, if I put the backing track on, I can now use these positions to start playing along. So, if I use position one. There's a half step bend. It's really somber. And that was bending up a G there. Like a half step. That's a full step. So moving up position two.
God, it's so. So anyway, there's a few things there kind of like, you know, to kind of go, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing as well. But that's kind of like, that's just moving through those three positions and kind of like using them. And basically all I'm doing there is I'm just using my, how I feel to kind of like, you know, what, you know, to get these kind of like melodies out. Then they're, they're not, I'm not really thinking too much about it, to be honest with you. I know kind of, I'm, I was thinking then about where position I am, but I'm not thinking about, melodies i'm just lost in the backing track so to say so it kind of you know works and also different dynamics and stuff that kind of comes from just how it feels and it's so important to kind of get into that habit of just trying to start to channel how you feel and whatnot so um so yeah so the last thing i want to teach today like i say i'm not going to go heavily into this because i want you to just go away and use position one peter green position uh peter green position and then position three and just start feeling it out with the backing track, if that makes any sense, because it's really important. Hopefully there's a few kind of like licks you can steal, but like, you know. You know, so that one is just kind of like, starts on the 10th fret on the beat, on the G. And then it goes to the 12th fret G. Then it goes to the 11th fret on the B. And then it goes to the 13th fret. And then it bend it up, bend up the 13th fret a toe. And then it's a release, uh, it's not even a release, so it's, it's and it goes to the uh, 11th fret on the B, and then back to the 13th fret B, and then it finishes up on the 12th fret on the G. And that's just that lick I taught you up here. It's just higher. So it's just basically bending up the 17th fret toe. And then you're barring the 15th fret on the B, the high E and the B. And then you bend up the, uh, play the 18th fret and then bend up. Okay, so uh, I hope this is making sense. I really hope it's making sense. So, um, I'm terrified. I'm so, I, I, t teaching videos scare the life out of me. They really do. So, um, so yeah, so that's that. So the last thing I want to teach is Peter's intro to his solo, this. <laughs> stop there because there it you know it, it gets you off on the right foot so peter starts his solo we're on the 13th fret on high e to the 15th fret high e and then goes back to the 13th fret high e and then does it again so slow is like back to the 13th um so that's that and then it goes up to the b string on the 13th and 15th fret like that so and then it's uh 15th fret b string 13th fret b string uh 11th fret b string 10th fret b string and then we go to uh, the 12th fret on a G string, and then it's uh, 11th fret B string. So, okay, and then from this um, uh, 12th fret B, uh, G, 11th fret B. 12th fret G again, we go to the 13th fret B, so it's, and then we go from the 12th to the high E on the 10th, okay, so that, so the whole thing really so far is like this, really slow. Oh, and I'm, 
and I'm, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm not even explaining that bit yet. So yeah, so that's that. That's a gorgeous little walk up. Okay, and then it, and then he does this. Oh, which is just uh, this is like a run to die for. So we start off on the high E on the thirteenth fret, fifteenth fret high E, seventeenth uh, fret high E. And then we go to the 18th fret high E, and then we bend that up a tone. So like that. And then we go back to the uh, 18th fret, un kind of unbent, then 17th fret. And then you can kind of go from where you want there, kind of thing. That just kind of gives you a kind of a bit of a way in. a bit out but I know I do apologize for that that's my own silliness there I've missed a bit out from <laughs> but I, what I'll do is it, it, what you're doing there is just basically using this second position just kind of a, there's like a bit of a gap there it's... you want to kind of start off on that 13th fret on the high E And you can do kind of anything you want. I mean, it sounds like a sort of cop out, doesn't it? It really does. But it really is kind of like the key to this style is just kind of like finding your own way in it. It really is. And like I say, I know it. I know it sounds like a bit of a cop out. But knowing the scales you can use and knowing the chord progression is kind of all you need to know to dive in and start to kind of feel. The song, if that makes any sense, you start to understand. Okay, I can use this shape, and I can use that shape, and I can use this shape. So I don't have to worry about. I know where I'm gonna be. I know where I can go and where I can't go. So because of that, I can now just kind of get lost in it and just kind of let myself get absorbed by the by the by the music and then just become part of that um, and play with it and not against it, kind of thing, or or, or over it. So to say, you are then part of music. And Peter was a class classic example of that Peter would play with the music you know he's never again everything he played fit so perfectly and these scales that I've showed you they will fit you know what I mean uh, like like I like I showed you with the backing track but um but yeah so just bear that bear that in mind just and again you don't even have to do you don't have to start solo like that you can start solo however you want you know because that's how Peter does it I mean you have to you can go or you don't even have to start it like up the high end you can start down here Also another note I forgot to mention to everybody that's I do apologize hopefully you, hopefully you might have seen it second fret on the G string you can use that note as well it's actually quite a cool note okay but yeah it just just feel your way through it like I say get get a backing track going all as I say in the end of this video I will just kind of like loop this backing track that I've got just let it go and um you know, you, you can just kind of feel where you need to go. So I want to start here.
that's another thing. Don't be afraid to skip between high and low. You know what I mean? Just go again. Just like if you want to go from here to do it. You know what I mean? Again, just all how you feel. It's really all how you feel. So, um, so yeah. So, is there anything else I want to talk about? Like I say, neck pickup predominantly tone wise. Bridge pickup when you want it to scream. Ride the volume. Dynamics. Dynamics are the key to Peter's playing. You need to play with that tension and release thing all the time. You know, there is so much to be said for it. And you really do have to kind of like be on it with that kind of thing. It really is important. So, um, so yeah, so, is there anything else? No, position one, position two, position three, I want to talk about. Intro to the solo, intro to the song. No, I'm pretty sure I've, I've kind of covered everything I kind of wanted to do. I hope this video is okay, everybody. I hope this makes sense. I hope it gets right. Copyright law as well. Um, it's a teaching video. It shouldn't fall under that, but hey. Um, but yeah, so I hope this video is okay, everybody. I hope it makes sense. If not, foam batons are on standby. But uh, I hope it makes sense. I hope there's something you can kind of take away there. Like I say, for the last, uh, what, however long I've got on the camera, for the last 10 minutes of the uh, thing, I just want to get this backing track going basically i'm just going to loop it to let it play and uh it should kind of like give you a, a nice kind of backing track just to kind of like uh start to kind of play along to and, and hopefully uh, you know something there and i'll also time stamp it in the description box as well so if you just want to kind of come back to this video go straight to the backing track you don't have to look for it you can just go to the description box click the uh, time stamp and you'll go straight to the um the backing track basically so uh so yeah hope uh, you enjoyed this video everybody i hope it's made sense i really do i hope there's something in there you can take away i hope you know, uh, it gets you on the right foot to learn, uh, what playing this song and learning this song. Like I say, there is the key to this song is developing your own voice in it. You know, as well as kind of like trying to emulate Peter and stuff like that. But you do have to kind of like put a bit of yourself in it as well. It's one of those songs that you, you can't just be, um, you can't just emulate. It's in, it's impossible to kind of like you know. And Peter would never play the same thing twice. You know, he'd never played it the same way twice. And that's really important. To get into that kind of thing. So uh, so yeah. So it's made sense. I uh, hope this video has been okay. And uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you again. Have a great weekend everybody. Uh, and I will see you again on Monday for another vid. Uh, no idea what it's going to be. But we will see you on Monday. And uh, yeah. Have a great morning, afternoon and good evening. And uh, Peter Green is a god. He really is. And this song proves it. Without a shadow of a doubt. Stunning. The man was an absolutely stunning guitar player. So uh, hope, like I said. I hope there's enough in this video to kind of get you off. Um, with this song and I hope there's a few things you can kind of steal from what you can see me doing uh, and also listening to Peter and again just one more thing actually quickly sorry uh, like I said, I've mentioned before I just want to reiterate the original the warehouse version of the New Orleans version is out of tune so bear that in mind if you're going to play along you will need to retune your guitar to them because they're not in tune they're slightly flat so, um, so yeah so anyway have a great morning afternoon good evening everybody have a great weekend I'll see you again one day have a great one goodbye now thank you much for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed the backing track.